see, this comes to us from Variety. The box office, the Marvels, gets grounded with MCU's second lowest opening day ever. So the first, I'm assuming the first op worst opening day is probably like, what? Yeah. I don't know, it, Black that, Widow or something? I, now that I think about it, imagine if Dune Part 2 kept its original release date. What, what, imagine how much worse it would be for them. Oh, this movie will get zero money. <laughs> right. It will get zero money, right? Yeah. And okay, like, I it's like, oh, you know, you're taking IMAX, you know, theater spots away from the Marvels. Like, bitch, no one is going to watch the Marvels in IMAX, okay? You're you're not freaking Chris Nolan, all right? You're not Christopher Nolan where you're shot with an IMAX 3D camera, okay? You have to watch it in IMAX. You're not doing something like Dune where it's like, Cinema, you know, cinematography is like insane and it looks really good. Production value is really high, right? But I guarantee you, Dune did not cost $300 million to make. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. okay, let's read this article from Variety. It says, uh, what a difference four years make. When Captain Marvel hit theaters in March 2019, it landed what was then the seventh highest domestic opening weekend across the cinematic universe, so the Marvel Cinematic Universe, entries with $153 million. That's insane. That's a lot. And the thing is that the marketing was like, may it be if you like Captain Marvel or not, marketing to like, we, we're going to put this movie that's, you know, at best a six out of 10 in between the two biggest movies the MCU has ever released. And it's gonna get a billion dollars. You could put it, you could put Dark World in between those two movies, and it'll it'll make it, it'll make a billion dollars. Yeah. You put yeah. It, you could put you could <laughs> you could put Dragon Ball Evolution in between that, and <laughs> it'll make a billion dollars. Okay, if it's tied yeah. to the MCU. Yeah. Like any movie, right? Yep. So it's because you have that sunk cost fallacy where you're in, you're invested so much time, more than a decade with these with these uh you know characters now and you're like okay i i have to watch everything i, I need to see how the ultimate climax like what how you know how is it gonna end i need to see that right though 50 shades of grayson with the 199 says egg roll yo thank you so much for the thank you 199 dude yo, thank you thank you all right so the thing is uh, yeah it's it's pretty damn bad right let's see uh, let's continue and say a colossal figure that only uh, one 2023 release Barbie has exceeded. Now, several superhero entries later, its new sequel, The Marvels, likely won't be able to reach even a third of its predecessor's debut. The comic book film landed the second lowest opening day gross ever across the 32 features in the MCU, earning $21.5 million from the 4,000 4, screens. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of screens. Yeah. Right. And and like you said, they also have IMAX screens now it's because Dune is not in any of them. Yeah. Right. Let's see that that so that can, includes the six point six million dollars in previews. It barely surpassed 2008's The Incredible Hulk, which holds the record for the MCU's lowest domestic opening day at twenty one point four six million. And falls behind the series starters Ant Man twenty two point six million, not adjusted for inflation. If the Marvels doesn't pick up the pace, it will trail behind the opening weekend grosses of both those films, 55.4 million and 55.7 million, respectively, to secure a franchise worst debut. Now, you can have you can inflate the reviews and the scores on Ron Tomato, IMDB, or any other website that you know a person can review stuff in, but the numbers do not lie. Yep. Right. And the thing is, I, I'm pretty sure the Koreans are super, super thirsty for that one dude, the prince guy in that singing planet. But I don't think he's going to save it. Maybe, yep. you, maybe you got to get the entire BTS squad. Maybe then you'll get like $100 million, right? But I don't, yeah. it, it's not going to do good, man. I, yeah. how, do you, how do you feel about this? Do, do, do you think that it's going to be – do you think it's going to be worse, like ultimate, like worst MCU like it's, a strong, it's a strong contender. But for me, at best, the very best of the best scenario, it's going to beat those two. But that's about it. <laughs> it's going to beat Incredible Hulk. It's going to beat at Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, no, Quantumania. Ant-Man, Quantumania. But yeah, it's like 
for every release of ent- any entertainment piece, like it's the first two weeks, right? That's critical. Yeah. Anything beyond that, it's it's not gonna be as good anymore as the first two weeks. If your first week is all alone already, is already this bad, it's not. There's no way it's gonna boost it up. There's there's no way it's gonna somehow skyrocket in the rest of the world. It's like yeah, yeah. Like, See, Booming Bob says BTS is busy with mandatory military. Yeah, I heard that. I heard, I heard they actually need to do the, they actually need to go do military. Ah, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Military is Makes mandatory sense. in Korea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And- so here's, now, here's the thing I would say if they actually got like a legit, like K pop moment in the movie, this movie would have gotten a lot more money. Hands down. K pop is everywhere. People love Korean music, right? They love like K drama and stuff like that. So now if they got like a, um, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, like some kind of like crazy, like Korean, like, uh, you know, just yeah. K-pop music, like music video just happens to be in that, you know, singing planet, then it could potentially make good money, right? See, Kalu says, I think it was more like people were curious about how this uh, Captain Marvel would do. And then they learned their lesson and knew better for next time. I think so, too. I think so. And um, but the thing is that they also didn't get too much, um, you know, promotion time because of the strike. They could blame yeah. that, right? They're gonna be like, oh, because of the strike, we couldn't promote our movie. Korean handsome Korean man cannot promote the movie, you're right? So um, you know, we cannot have uh, you know, Br- uh, Brie Larson and uh, you know, n- you know, Nick Fury could promote the movie. They they could blame it on that because the strike just ended not long ago. So it, I don't know, could be. But, but let's see. Let's continue. Those are some concerning numbers for the Marvel Studios. The once bulletproof production banner has earned nearly $30 billion at the box office since 2008, but has faced a downtrend in theatrical returns, various behind-the-scenes headaches in recent years. Even so, the Marvel's hitting a uh, super <laughs> latively low debut would come as an especially tough sting, given Marvel still scored two sizable openings from uh, Ant-Man 3. No, yeah, Ant-Man 3 and then Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah, see, Guardians of the Galaxy did good. And uh, yeah. Quantumania... Well, Quantumania was was basically considered the official Phase 5 movie, right? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Right, so, so people are like, okay, oh, we have to watch that now. This is a new phase. We got to watch that. Yeah. And then um, we 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 get to see uh, what's it called again? Um, you know, Modok's butt, <laughs> his tiny ass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Um, and there's also a hefty 220 million production price tag to count for the Marvels. No, it's more than that, dude. Definitely more than that. Yeah. Like, but we did see that the 3D was not good. And the 3D was not good. I think that. Um, but, but but overall, I I think I don't. I would say it probably will make back its money at the end of the day, in terms of um production value, not like not value production uh you know price and not um marketing. I think that that's it. Probably made like two hundred million, two hundred fifty million. I would say that. Right. I don't know. Do you, do you think so? Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, Ant Man didn't do good either. Right. I think it even lost money. Or yeah, Ant-Man didn't do so well either. Yeah, I know Guardians did good. Yeah, because it's it's legit. Um, the last probably for a long time, last decent movie we'll see for a long time because it was James Gunn who did it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, it's it's everything that's going on right now is everything we thought of like a year ago when or whenever the first trailer made its debut for the Marvels like. Oh no! This movie is gonna be so bad. It's, it's gonna be. It's just a matter of. Uh we were we we're we are so close to the bull's eye. It's just a matter of how close are we to the bull's eye, but it, it's just a, we're incredibly spot on this time. It's like, it's as bad as everyone thought it would be, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's well, it will be interesting to see how it does in the coming weeks, which yeah. will probably be not so good. If already the first week alone, because that first week is very, it's the most important because that's when it's first released. That's when marketing at its peak. Then the succeeding weeks, not so much anymore. So yeah, and yeah. and the thing is that we, this is this week in the U.S. is a holiday weekend, which is Veterans Day, right? So um, you know, thank you for all the veterans out there. 
Thank you for everyone who served. Uh, you know, thank you so much for that. Uh, but you have Friday because they're uh, we're observing uh, Veterans Day uh, yesterday, Friday. So you have Friday and you have the preview sales for Thursday and then Saturday and Sunday. So we will know how much this movie will make the first opening weekend by tomorrow, right? I'm pretty sure um, Odin. Right. Um, he, you know, he'll, he'll probably have like the numbers out to by tomorrow. I'm pretty sure a lot of these news outlets and entertainment outlets will have the news by tomorrow. Right. And then uh, Charlie Stevenson says, Phil, did the strike uh, keeping the actors from giving interviews help the ticket sales? I would say there are there are people who w will consider like, oh, I want to see, you know, if they're going to you know, be able to pr promote that because that's when they go out to like promote their movies. People go out and give uh, interviews to like the Hollywood Reporter, Variety, Deadline, all these other news outlets. They usually promote their movies, right? Or they'll go out to like, um, I don't know, Jimmy Fallon or some shit like that, the late night show. He's, and they'd be like, oh, you know, bring out, you know, Brie Larson, you know, what are you doing and stuff like that? You know, and they talk about and they joke and joke. And then it's like, oh, so. Um, so, so, so what are you working on? He's like, Oh, my movie's coming out, go watch it. And so I'm like, that. it's really funny. You know, it's really good. It's, you know, um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, stay, stay until the end, stay until the, like, they will, they'll promote it as much as they can. Right. And a lot of people will consider it, right. Especially the normies. They'll be like, okay, you know, um, I watched this person on, you know, Jimmy Kimmel or wh whatever garbage late night TV, sh uh, you know, talk show, whatever you're, you're listening to. And they'll use that as promotion you know, purposes. And, it can maybe drive it up by like a couple of percent, but it's like, like it could be like, you know, anywhere from like a couple million to like $50 million they can potentially get depending on how much people they reach. Right. And like, they can potentially show like, okay, and here's, you know, here's a quick trailer that's not, no, never before seen or something like that. Like they can promote that kind of stuff and they can't because it's a strike. It's a part of their contract. So that's why like, you didn't actually see a lot of people talking, right? Rachel Zegler didn't really talk about her movies and stuff like that, even though she's, you know, she's a loud mouth. And a lot of these, you didn't hear anyone talk. It's because of the, what's it called again? Strike. The, the strikes. The strike. mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, man, uh, Nia DaCosta didn't, wasn't this said that like she basically left the production, like during post-production, the movie wasn't even fully done. She just fucking left. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, at the same time, I actually think it's the norm. I agree with some people that it's actually the norm. It's just that her the way she directed it all throughout was just bad. I think even though well like Christopher Nolan or James Cameron, I think it's I think it's a, the norm for directors to, when it's almost done. It's okay. This is what you need to do for the remainder. Then they move on to their next project already. It's just that it is. An, for me, I don't make it a big deal. It's more of how they manage it in its entirety. That if they if they had established a good foundation already before they left, then the movie would be fine. It's just that it's from be from the beginning, it was already a terrible idea and terrible execution. Mm -hmm. For for me, that's how I take it. That's how I perceive it. Because like, yeah, directors, they're especially the well-known ones, they're very busy. They always have one the next project to take care of so but is yeah. nia da costa like considered as as, really well known as, though as far as i know she is <laughs> she is inexperienced <laughs> yeah yeah all right let's see um i do want to read some of this right because it compares it to com some of their stuff let's see also opening this weekend is sony is putting out journey to bethlehem a christmas musical that takes it back way before the nativity of jesus christ the film uh the firm films production and projecting a 200 uh, two million the two yeah, 2.8 million 22 uh 200 i'm oh, sorry 2002 locations beyond marvels is shaping up to be uh yet another quiet weekend at the box office universal blumhouse's five nights of freddy will nab silver despite its availability on streaming services peacock the adaptation from the popular horror video game series projecting another sizable tumble of 53 percent in its third weekend adding nine million to its domestic now here's the thing though Taylor Swift's uh, The Eras tour, uh, tour concert film grossed $1.9 million on Friday with uh, 28, 48 venues and expected to make. So here's the thing, though. It's already made this much money domestically, right? And this, and this is a concert movie. Yeah. Right? And I think it's just like, I'm pretty sure a lot of these concert movies are going to be a thing moving forward too, right? So, yeah, this thing has no competition and it's still only made like 20 million ish this weekend. Oh man, this yeah. is really, this is really bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. 
Um, like they used to be like so good, right? Do you remember like back in the day when like once you found out like at the end of uh, Captain America, right? You're watching the post credit. You see Captain America punching the, the fucking sandbag. Boom, boom, boom. And he punches it and it flies like 10 feet away from him. Right? And he, you know, you're like, oh shit. And then like, you knew that the Avengers movie was going to happen. That was, that was a fucking event, man. That was a, like a worldwide event. Everyone was waiting for that. It's like, oh my God, this is it's finally happening. You know, we're getting like all these superheroes that we grew up with. They're coming together. It's going to be fucking cool. Mm -hmm. And they thought, you know, they thought that they're going to be so, their dick was going to be so big. The hubris got to them. We're never yeah. going to fail. We're Marvel. We're Disney. This yeah. is this is the legacy of Stan Lee. And Stan Lee's probably like, ah, fuck. <laughs> you guys are ruining <laughs> my shit. I don't know, yeah. man. So do, do, you th do you think it's going to, after everything, do you think it's going to even make back its production budget? I don't think so. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. It's like, uh, if you did worse than The Flash, and The Flash lost a lot of money, right? I think it just made its production. Flash just made its production, I believe. Mm -hmm. And if you did worse, then you probably won't. I mean, for me, it's as simple as that. Because it's like, the you have approximately the same budget, but you did worse compared to that other film. So yeah. you're probably not going to make, you're probably not going to make it even recoup your production, let alone break even. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.